None other has ever known. Somebody give the choir a hand. Praise the Lord. They do a good job with so little. They do such a great job. But of course, when they got some out of the piano, they don't call them they, they hear about it. This is Boom. Professor Boom, whatever you call her. She's our own. <laughs> and so she stayed with us all the way through. We got to give her, give her, give her praise while she's still here. Amen. 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 Our, as an old folks say, our all and all. That's right. 
He is, as John the Apostle said, the Alpha and Omega. Yes, he, is. he is the beginning and the end. Jesus is our, uh, as some folk would say, water in dry places, both physically and spiritually. And yet he is still the bread of life. The Bible says Jesus, after having been tempted of the devil in the wilderness, a place that he was led to go into by the Spirit, did hunger after 40 days of fasting without bread. He told that devil to his face, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone. You know what it says? But by every word of God. That's Luke chapter 4, verse number 4. Jesus gave this answer to Lucifer, that old serpent, the dragon, who was the devil, after the devil had told him, if thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made free. Luke 4, 3. Jesus, must, you must understand, did not have to turn a stone into bread for his physical needs. Can I say that one more time? Jesus did not, I'm going to change it. Jesus did not necessarily have to turn a stone into bread for his physical needs. Neither did he have to perform a miracle for Satan in order for him to be known or to be seen as the son of the living God. My, my, my. Listen to me. Jesus likewise did not have to perform a miracle every time you look just to prove he's God to you. Y'all ain't gonna give me the Some folks think that God's got to do everything that we want him to do. And we don't have to do anything but say thank you Lord and go about our business. Help me somebody. Act like a scoundrel all week long but Lord help me when I get in trouble. Act like you ain't got good sense. You don't know God when you get in front of your friends, but let you get in trouble. Lord, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. That's all you know. But when God needs you to stand up in front of that sinner and tell him about Jesus, you talk about everything but Jesus. Basketball, football, LeBron James, and everything else that comes in the NCAA, Sweet 16, everything. Huh? Jesus does not have to prove that he belongs in the Godhead. That's right. That's right. Huh? That's right. Because Jesus is the Son of God. Yes, he, is. he is the second person of the Holy Trinity. Yes, he is. And he also is the bread of life. Yes, I've got a couple of questions to ask you this morning. How many know, how many know that, 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 that if you do not eat or drink water for long periods of time, that you cannot survive physically as a human being? Anybody, anybody know that? How many know that a human being can go for more than three weeks without food? But how Gandhi lasted 21 days without any food of any kind in India while he fasted. 21 days. How many know that a human being can only go without water for about a week without dying of dehydration? How many know that the human body is made up of six Thus, living cells need water to survive. So the question is asked, Freeman, why are you telling us these science information? We want to talk about religion. Because we are human. Huh? We are human. And if you think you're going to get away without eating and drinking and survive, you're in for a rude awakening. I'm trying to get you to understand that, that we as humans need food and water to survive in our physical body. Watch this. Yet on the flip side of divine and spiritual reasoning, our spiritual man or our spiritual needs have to be met also. And to do that, we've got to have spiritual grief. We can go to food line and rack and sack and win dicks and get all the Mary Jane bread you want. <laughs> But it won't help your spirit man. Amen. That'll just help your physical man because you was hungry, your stomach hurt, and you wanted to breathe. Amen. Huh? Amen. But when it comes to eternal life and where shall we end up when this life is over, that piece of bread won't do you any good. Because it only speaks to uh, the physical side of man. 
And thus, in some way in our existence, we have to come to grips with the idea that we are a spirit yeah. with a soul mm -hmm. housed in the body. Right. And that God is a spirit. Well, mm -hmm. And he told the lady at the well, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. truth. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But watch this, watch this. Yet our physical bodies keep declining day by day. You don't believe it, young so just keep on living. The young become the old. Gray hairs start to appear. No matter how much you color or dye your hair with that just for me. Gray will still come back if you don't die again. The knees start to ache. The back won't be right. Get a kink in your neck. Wrinkles in your eyes. Crows feet across your forehead. And your teeth start to fall out. You look good looking, man. Good looking woman. Now you wear false teeth. Dentures and postures to become our buddies. Heartaches, kidneys won't operate right. Livers won't filter right. Then look out, sugar, diabetes. High blood pressure. All type of diseases that infiltrate our body. Then those that wear eyeglasses like I do, your eyes start going down. Can't see it if you wear you don't wear eyeglasses. Some got contact lenses. You 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 black woman with blue eyes. How you do that one? Black man with red eyes. <laughs> ah, Lord help me. Somebody said, pretty young thing now became an old bent over woman. Yet David said in Psalm 33, 25, I have been young and now am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken. No, his seed begging bread. Bread is need for both physical and spiritual survival. Amen. Jesus in John chapter 6 deals with a multitude of people. Who had seen him in a mountain over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. They had seen him feed 5,000 men, not including women and little teeny children. But the thing about it was just so funny that they had to borrow the food from the lad who had a lunch pail <laughs> and had five barley loaves. And the Bible said two small fish. Didn't say he had two big fish, two small fish. But here's, here's what the God I serve does. He can take a little bit and make a whole lot out of it. Y'all ain't gonna hear me today. You say, I can't do this, I can't do that. But you forget to call on the God that has everything. And the God who can take nothing and make something out of it. But Lord, I ain't got no money, I can't do this. God ain't asked y'all that. God said, trust in me. With all your heart, I'll take you from here. Don't understand. You don't understand everything God wants to do and how He wants to do it. He just asked you to trust in me. So here was Jesus who could take five barley loaves and two fish, feed a multitude of people, and still have 12 baskets of food from the fragment of leftovers of the five loaves <laughs> and two small fish. Isn't God good? I said, Isn't God good? How many know Jesus is still in the miracle working business? Some folks say, well, miracles have been done away with. And the Bible was authenticated by miracles. And Jesus' ministry closed the Canaan. And there are no miracles available. But I, I suggest that every time a baby is born, that's a miracle. All right. Amen. Are y'all listening? Amen. The process that goes on in the inside of you ladies is a miracle. Amen. Huh? Let, let that young biblical boy court rip and see what happens. So it's very tell you. Let that court rip and you will almost bleed to death. I remember some years ago, I can tell the story, my wife uh, uh, lost a baby. And we were in the hospital, remember playing eye and praying. The doctor said, you know that she has lost so much blood, we don't know what's going to happen. Talk to the nurse, the nurse said, you know that when a when a umbilical cord rip from the stomach, the, 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 the patient usually don't survive. Uh, that's what they told me. But we prayed and we prayed and we prayed, 
And she's sitting over there now taping my sermon. <laughs> <laughs> I know what God can do. Don't you shortchange God talking about what God can do. God is a miracle worker, my friends. And the same God that calmed the waters and stopped the raging sea is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Well, this miracle that Jesus did now causes multitudes of people to follow Jesus the day after he has did the miracle over to Capernaum on the other side of the Sea of Tiberias. But Jesus, being truly God and truly man, understood that they only followed him for the miracle's sake. They only followed him because he had fed 5,000. They wanted to see another miracle. How many people only follow God when he take care of you? Thank you, Lord. I follow you as long as you give me a Cadillac. Pay my rent note. Give me a fur coat. And give me a new pair of shoes. Lord, I can't follow you when I'm in trouble because I just can't do it. But treat me good, Lord, and I'll be with you all the way. So, folks. Only follow God for the miracles. What they can get out of Him. But we must follow God because He is Savior and Lord of the life of the Christian. Huh? You see, these witnesses that had witnessed the miracle that Jesus had performed a day earlier now seek Him for personal gain. But I like what Jesus told them. Jesus told them, labor not for the meat which perisheth. But for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life. He said, Which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for he hath God the Father sealed. Yeah. That's verse 27 of chapter 6. Yeah. Jesus lets the inquirers of his miracles know that that physical will not last. The physical meat will perish. Don't you know that physical meat will spoil if you don't keep it in the refrigerator? That's right. You don't keep it in the freezer? Mm -hmm. You got it in the freezer, it's unplugged, and the freezer starts to melt, the ice melts, so the little that food will go bad. Amen. A lot of folk lost food in the hurricanes, Hurricane Floyd, mm -hmm. Trina, wherever they was. Meat that they had had no more electricity, and the meat went bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Understand, physical meat will spoil, but spiritual meat will not. Amen. And the spiritual meat is the word of God, which endures unto eternal life. You see, when you eat his meat, when you eat his meat spiritually, you are kept. Listen to me. Because he was sealed and kept by God the Father. Amen. Ephesians 4 30, the Apostle Paul writes, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Understand, church, if God the Father sealed Jesus to complete his missionary mission here on earth, the Holy Spirit seals a believer with a seal that cannot be broken by man, sin, or the devil, and the demons in earth or in the atmosphere. Thus, when Jesus could answer the naysayers who told him in verse 31, Our Father did eat manna in the desert. And as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to do what? What if y'all looking at your Bibles? Y'all know what I'm saying. I can change the text if y'all want me to, but y'all ain't paying attention to what I'm saying. I just asked what the book said. Point being, point being, point being, right what I'm saying. Listen and read your Bible. Don't nobody tell you nothing except you know what the words say. So many are listening to any and everything. But don't know what the real truth is. Because they don't read for themselves. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Look at Jesus' succinct and precise answer to the followers of the Mosaic law and the Mosaic system of life. In verse 32, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. Jesus let the miracle sequels know that the bread Moses gave the Israelites in the wilderness of sin <laughs> was only physical manner from a spiritual God. Mm -hmm. But that the true bread from heaven, which is the spiritual bread from the spiritual God in heaven, was standing right in front of them. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, all you have to do is partake spiritually. And you can have life eternal. Look at verse 33. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto what did it say? The world. The world. Giveth life unto the world. Jesus explained to them that the bread of life is he, not it. Listen to me. The bread of life or the bread of God is not he, he is a he but not an it. And that he came down from heaven supplying life to a world that is hungry spiritually. Mm -hmm. And the world that cannot be filled with physical bread alone. But by the words that proceed out of God's mouth. Look at the naysayers' answer to Jesus' statements of proclamation. Look at verse 34. The naysayers said, Then say they unto him, what they say? Lord, evermore, give us this bread. They said, Lord, evermore, give us this bread. The followers of Moses' system of living thought that Jesus would pull a loaf of bread from under his garment and give them that they might eat because they were still thinking in the physical mm -hmm. that the bread that Jesus was talking about was physical bread. Mm -hmm. They thought that Jesus had another loaf from the little boy. And that they equated this to his miracle when he fed the 5,000. But Jesus had to open the eyes of the multitude spiritually for them to see the spiritual lesson that Jesus was trying to teach. This spiritual lesson would lead to eternal life spiritually after the body descends to the grave physically. Look at verse 35. The whole matter must be concluded. The inquirer, inquirer of the naysayers and the followers of Moses' system of living must be answered clearly, fully, and succinctly. Jesus said to them, I am. Y'all catch that? I am. What did, what did God tell Moses? He said, I am what? He said, when you go back to Pharaoh, tell him who, who sent you. I am. That I am. They understood when he said, I am, he invoked the name of God. He said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. That's right. Church, Jesus is the bread of life. Yes. But not only that, Jesus is the water of life. Yes. Jesus takes woo, our spiritual and our physical hunger and both our physical and spiritual thirst, he takes it away. Yes. But the thing I like about it so good is that Jesus died on Calvary's over the cross. Yes. He saved us with his life. When he gave his life as a propitiation or as an atonement for our sins. He made up, my friends, the sin. He made up for the sin that Adam sinned against God in the Garden of Gethsemane. Or said the Garden of Eden. He appeased an angry God who could not stand the sight of sin. Are you listening to me? His blood came streaming down. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? That's right. His death atoned our sins and delivered righteousness for the saints of the kingdom of God. 
Church, I want you to know the day he died till the sun stopped shining. Yes, he did. Didn't he die? Yes, yes, he did. It was a miserable, cruel, and unusual death. Because Pilate said, I cannot find no fault in this man. Y'all take it back. Said it's that time of the season. You can, you can have it back. You got your choice, Jesus or the rabbits. Which one you want? Did they say give us Jesus? No. They said give us who? Barabbas. Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. Jesus, I want you to crucify. Roman Procuria, Pilate, give him the death penalty. We as Jewish Sahedrin leaders cannot give him the death penalty, but you as a Roman leader, you can do it. Do it for us. Take him down and scourge him and whip him, but make sure he dies. But some of them remember in the back of their mind that he said, you know, in three days I rise again. Isn't that right? They said, said put, a, put a soldier out there and make sure that the apostles don't come and steal this body away. He told me, you send your own people out there. Y'all take care of it. Put a seal on it. Put a, put a guard on it. But guess what? The grave couldn't hold it. The seal could not hold Jesus Christ. Because early one Sunday morning. I said early one Sunday morning. Because he is the bread of life. Yes, yes, yes. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor, and I have your lady, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I meet and low in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Yes. He said, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Yes. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believe in me shall never thirst. Because God, <laughs> Great God, right? because Jesus died for us, yes. we're going to live again. Amen. Because Jesus suffered. Mm -hmm. We don't have to suffer on the cross. Because right. he did it for us. Yes, because Jesus allowed them to whip him all night long, put him on the cross, piss him in the side, put him in the grave. Mm -hmm. But God said, get up. Mm -hmm. Raise him up. Yeah. Now that he's up, he's our Lord and Savior. Because he's up, we have a right to your life. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. I don't know, church, what tomorrow may bring. Folk are dying every day. Friends are leaving us. Loved ones are leaving here. But we must consider our own plight and what is our eternal destination. We have to get to God. Jesus is coming back soon. Church, look for church without spot. Jesus is the bread of God. Eat his bread spiritually, you shall live forever. Fail to eat it in physical and spiritual death will be your life. God bless you. The Lord is good. How many know the Lord is good today? And his mercy. <laughs> Endure it for all generations. If I didn't know the Lord, I would get to know him today. Would you stand? You can come today. Maybe you need a church home. You can come by Leather County for baptism, Christian experience. Maybe you just want to be saved. You've been in the church all your life, but you never, never said, Lord, forgive me. Lord, save me. Lord, have mercy on my soul. You can do it right now. Say, Goliath. You may be seated.